catheters in position for an aortic root shot. I'm here to learn more about the heart and innovations to improve patient outcomes. And we're looking forward to the live cases coming up. It's a great uh, experience for uh, anyone who's interested in valvular heart disease. I'm doing credits for my clinical ladder. This is my first time I heard it was uh, amazing last year. Everyone shows up to learn more, nurses, mid-level staff, physicians, referring docs. So that we can educate ourselves and our patients. I take care of patients in the recovery room after they have this type of procedure and this gives me a little insight as to how they take care of them on the inside of the OR. We're very excited to learn more about the new advances in this technology. It's a critically important to get the message out. This is our second annual. We uh, are a leader in the field of transcatheter valve therapy. You know, we have one of the five largest tower volumes in the country. We're in multiple research trials in mitral and, and uh, tricuspid uh, technologies. And we're just excited to be able to share that with our colleagues, physicians, nurses, PAs, NPs. We're going to discuss some of the exciting changes in structural heart. Uh, most recently, we participated in the Medtronic low-risk trial where it was determined that risk no longer has a role in, in determining who receives transcatheter therapy as opposed to surgical AVR. What is the durability of the transcatheter valve and what are some of the patients that, that uh, transcatheter valve will not be appropriate or suitable for? In addition to that, we're introducing a new format of a live case. It's a valve in valve treatment with mitral valve therapy. It's very exciting to be involved in mitral therapies as well as aortic therapies. We only get one chance to deploy this valve right. It's very early aesthetic valve failure. So we uh, treated a patient who had prior mitral valve replacement surgery with a bioprosthetic mitral valve that had failed. She had had the surgery only two years ago, which is very unusual, but the valve uh, was leaking severely mitral regurgitation through the mitral leaflets. And rather than have an operation, we did a transcatheter mitral valve replacement using an Edward Sapien valve uh, through the groin, no surgery, and we're able to implant like that. The whole thing took about 45 minutes, even including talking and teaching during the course. Well, I think the STS came in at around uh, 7 or 8 percent. But You know, for me, no, even no. as a person who participates in the procedures, I, I've actually learned quite a bit. Oh, it's wonderful. I think it's a, it's a great uh, experience. It covers a broad range from things that are appropriate for nurses, APPs, surgeons, cardiologists. It's really bringing state-of-the-art to Long Island. The quality of the, of the lectures have been phenomenal, and having live cases going on is really exciting. This year we sold out. We've had over 180 attendees. The word's getting out. Uh, technology is advancing and we're helping more and more people. Patients who may not be candidates for typical surgery, surgical aortic valves, surgical mitral valves, I'll are still candidates for therapy by having um, transcatheter valve implantation. It is very important not only to provide outstanding care, which we do and are recognized as being the best on Long Island, but also to share the innovation, the stories around how we treat patients and how we take them uh, from disabling illness back to productive lives. It's transformational. We'll no longer be asking why shouldn't we do a surgical aortic valve replacement in any given patient, but the question to be answered will be, why shouldn't we do a transcatheter valve? One of the words that I use for myself and, and for many of my colleagues in the program is passion. We are constantly trying to push the envelope and try to expand our skill set, bring better and new technologies to our patients.